Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. On the program today, we're going to be talking about removing the roadblocks to health and healing. And on the program today is my mother, Peggy Caps. Thank you, Mother, you? <laughs> for joining us again. She's had a lot of things to share, and we really appreciate you being on the program. So we talked a bit about what the roadblocks might be to health and healing. And one of the primary things that we talked about was forgiveness. And I'd like to read some of our favorite scriptures here. And Mark 11 and 23, it's a very familiar passage of scripture, I'm sure, to you. It says, for assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Does that ring a bell? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> That's one where we all jump up and shout hallelujah, praise the Lord, and we speak the word and it comes to pass. We ask whatever we ask when praying, believing we receive. And then there's another verse, Jesus didn't stop. That wasn't the end of it. That, he, <laughs> the, he just kept on going. He says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the question today is, what would be some roadblocks to healing and health? And I think forgiveness, plays forgiveness a part. Forgiveness would be a big one. <laughs> it's not real easy to forgive when somebody does something bad for you or to you or kind of a difficult situation. It's easier to confess the word, isn't it? Much easier. Praise <laughs> God, every cell, <laughs> tissue, and organ in my body functions perfectly in divine perfection which God created it to function. That's I right. forbid any malfunction in Jesus' name. And then, <laughs> And then something comes to mind, you know, or something happens and you're angry and you say things that you shouldn't have said. Someone does something to you. And um, what does Jesus tell us to do? He says to forgive. Mm -hmm. And when we extend forgiveness to someone, then that looses us right. and releases us. And, you know, I'm sure that most of you that are watching today, you realize that those of us who are on television never have an opportunity to have problems or <laughs> uh, have unforgiveness. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, yes, we do. Um, and we exercise the word and do what it says to do, although it's not the easiest thing to do. No. And mom, I think you had a very good example of something that happened to you where you had a situation with I a did. person. And I'd like for you to share that story and how you well, overcame it. It just so happened that I heard your dad teach <laughs> on how to deal with unforgiveness. And uh, amazingly enough, it had to do with saying something. <laughs> Think of and that. that was saying, I forgive. I may not want to, but your word said I have to. So Father, I thank you. And so that was the way I used to forgive somebody. And I was very upset because I was not guilty of what they said I was guilty of. And it just really bothered me and it, I just felt bad. I just, you know, really felt bad towards that person. And I thought, hmm, this is gonna be hard. And so I started saying every time I saw them, every time I went near where they were, I started saying, now Father, your word said that I have to forgive. I don't want to forgive because they were wrong. They did me wrong, but your word said I have to forgive. So I forgive in Jesus' name, I forgive them. And I must have done that for two or three weeks. Every time I saw them, every time I thought about them, I'd say, I'd say that, I'd say, Father, I forgive them. 
I'm saying, I forgive them. And saying is what puts the faith in motion that causes it to get, and you know what? It was a very sudden thing. All of a sudden, next time I saw that person after about three weeks of doing that, I, there was nothing there. No feeling? Absolutely nothing. No feeling of no, anger? or No feeling of any kind. And so the Lord just did a work with His Word in my heart, in my spirit. It definitely wasn't in my head because <laughs> my head wasn't even cooperating <laughs> at the time. But the more I said it, the more it got in my spirit, man. And the Spirit of God works in your spirit. It's alive. It's causing that to come to pass. It's, it's telling your spirit and your spirit then tells your mind, okay, you, you, you forgive them. You forgive them. The Word is alive and it's coming forth to, and, and you just suddenly, you forgive them. But now, I would not have been able to do that had not that been for the practice of quoting the Word and saying what, what Jesus said. Forgive them. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. So, so what, what you're I, saying is that you didn't really want to forgive, no. but you <laughs> were going to be obedient to the Word of God, and you didn't feel like you could forgive. Mm -hmm. You had no feelings of forgiveness at all, right. but you forgave in faith mm -hmm. by saying. By saying. So you and used say, your faith to forgive. And say. Yes. Have you ever heard someone say, I can never forgive them of that? And they won't be ever to able ever to forgive. Until they change they what they say. Right. That's right. Well you, you bound yourself. There are a lot of people out there that are in this situation because offense will come mm -hmm. to everybody. And some of the offenses, some of the things that are done are horrible. Some of them are minor. Some of them are just a matter of uh, being offended in traffic, <laughs> you know, but some of them are very serious mm -hmm. and people are living miserable lives. And a lot of times this unforgiveness works its way into resentment and hatred and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to that point, it affects your body yes, and your body becomes ill. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we don't realize just how much the, the mind, body, the soul, spirit, and body are all connected. They're not all separate things. Soul, spirit, body, however you want to put it, spirit, soul, body, whatever way you want to put it. They're not all separate things. They are all connected. That's why we've been talking about wholeness. Be thou whole. Mm -hmm. In order to be whole, you have to be whole in every realm, including the emotional realm, the mental realm, the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. and then the last thing that happens is it's the physical realm. Mm -hmm. You know, the other day I had, we had a, a, well, we didn't have a storm, but we have, well, we did have a storm. It, <laughs> it broke out the top of a, a big uh, tree that we have. And I went out there and I looked and I mean, obviously it's off, it is lying in the yard, it is dead because it's disconnected from the trunk, very large limb. And you know what, those leaves were just as green <laughs> as all get out. I mean, it looked perfectly alive. Mm -hmm. But about a week later, those leaves Oops. were brown because it takes a while to get out to the leaves, to the physical, let's call it the physical realm. What goes on in your heart takes a while to make its way to this physical body. Right. So you can be mad, you can be angry, you can have unforgiveness, and you can have it for a long time and say, well, it hadn't made me sick. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like that tree, that it just hasn't gotten there right. yet. And so these things like resentment and and strife, unforgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, they're really big ones. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know the situation you're talking about and it was wrong, uh, but by faith, you okay. stepped out and said, I will forgive. Mm -hmm. I am willing to forgive. Maybe that's the first step for somebody that's really offended is for you to just say, I am willing to forgive. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't like it, I don't feel like it, but I'm willing, Lord, to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing first, don't That's you? Right. And then the second thing that happens is you have to use your words because your words 
are what turn the whole thing around. Mm -hmm. The words produce the faith in you to do it. The words produce the faith in you to forgive. Right. So faith is not just, you know, for outward things, but it is also to change the inward you. And when Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive, I would take that seriously. That was Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was Jesus that said that. He was saying, you have power in your words. You can speak to this mountain, say, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart. And yet he turns around and says, but forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. And there's another place where Jesus said that if you go to the altar and you have unforgiveness against your brother or sister mm -hmm. or anyone, forgive. Leave the altar and go make it right and then come back. So the, uh, Jesus said this was really important. And a lot of some, there's people listening today that you have a, some real issues with unforgiveness. I have a two CD series called Letting Go of Hurts the freedom of forgiveness. And we're going to be offering that along with unforgiveness, a thief of faith that my dad taught. And here's a good one, a pamphlet, a free pamphlet that I'm going to send with this package called Wounded Spirits Cause Physical Sickness. And that'll be on your screen where you can call and order that. I wanna mention that in case somebody tunes out. <laughs> I want them to be plugged into that. So Jesus said forgiveness is really big in removing it's true. That being a, a roadblock there. We've got to forgive. Right. What are some of the other things that might be roadblocks to our healing prevent us from receiving? It's not that it's not we're preventing God from healing us. We want to make that very plain. Right. We're not preventing God from healing us but it hinders us from receiving. Receiving, the receiving end is what we have to do. And if we are not able to receive, we won't be a partaker of it. That's but right. We gotta figure out how we can receive it. That's right, now, I was studying and I was amazed when I got into the book of James, because I've read the book of James, I don't know how many times I've read the book of James, but this just jumped out at me because we're talking about health, staying in health. You can, can you stay in health and be angry, have jealousy, and all of those things? Can you no. stay in health? Not very long, no. because uh, have you ever heard someone say, well, that just eats away at me? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, what are some of the other sayings that people say? You know, that just galls me. That just, I, I worried myself sick. Well, the one your dad talked about most was the woman that kept saying that just burns me up. Every time somebody would do something, that just burns me up. And it got to the point after a few months or a year or so, she was having fever all the time. And they could not find out what was causing all that fever. She went and had tests and all this stuff. And then finally someone caught on to the fact that that was words she said every day, several times a day. And you have what you say, if you say what you have. Yeah, but she didn't really mean that. Well, that didn't matter. Her <laughs> spirit didn't know she didn't mean that. Your yeah. spirit man takes your words as your will. And when you say things, you better be saying the right things because if you say it long enough, it will come to pass. So those are foolish words and those are just expressions, but those expressions come to pass. So if we can say, if we can say things like, that just worries me sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People get sick from worry, don't they? Right. Why can't we say, I rejoice myself well? <laughs> that would be a good way to do it, but I don't know many that do that. No, because they, <laughs> they do the other thing. Let, let's look at the book of James here a minute. In James chapter three, uh, this is gonna sound familiar also to you, mom. <laughs> And it says, for we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, offend in speech, <laughs> never says the wrong things. He is a fully developed character and a perfect man able to control his whole body. Wow. 
if you can be perfect, what did it say? If you can say the right things and be perfect in your speech, and I don't mean perfect, I mean what I mean is you say the right things. Right. That, was that It says you can control your whole body. So does that mean that if you say the right words of forgiveness and healing and letting things go, that you can change the condition of your body? Yes, you can. Thank you for that amen. <laughs> All right, verse three True. says, if we set bits in the horse's mouths to make them obey us, we can turn their whole bodies about. Mm -hmm. What's in the mouth turns the body. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed how many times it says body in here? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about healing and health today and have been for the past few sessions. But it says that the bit in the mouth is like your words. And just like I used to ride horses, you know that. And I'd put that bit in the horse's mouth and ride that horse and through the bit I could go, whoa, I could turn. I could do all kinds of things because it controlled, what was in that horse's mouth controlled his body. Mm -hmm. And it's saying that we control our body with our mouth. Now, then it, he doesn't even stop there. He says, likewise, look at the ships. Though they are so great and driven by rough winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the impulse of the helmsman determines. You think about some of these big cruise ships out there sailing the seas, they're <laughs> huge. And if they have a little bitty rudder and that rudder will turn that ship all the way around. That's right. A huge ship is turned by a rudder. Mm -hmm. But I wanna make, say something about that. We were talking in earlier programs about like healing doesn't always come instantly. That's right. When the helmsman of that, that, that big cruise ship mm -hmm. puts in the input to turn that huge ship, how long does it take to turn? A little bit. Uh, quite a <laughs> while because you've got a big, huge ship out there and it's going to start turning. Matter of fact, you won't even notice it. At first, it'll be almost imperceptible and it will go just like that and it'll eventually get turned around. Mm -hmm. So James gives us a really important clue here. With our words, we can block or accept and implement the healing power of God. So verse five says, even so the tongue is a little member and it can boast of great things. See how much wood or how great a forest, a tiny spark can set ablaze. And the tongue is a fire. It says a world of iniquity. Mm -hmm. I remember when we first found out about the power of your words, we were all correcting each other. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> and we still do because it's still. And that's still, still important. It is. It's still important. You can't just, if you get yourself built up and you say the right words, what Jesus said, and on the good side, instead of the negative, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna make it today. I've got so-and-so. Oh my goodness, they're just about, I've heard people say these kids are driving me nuts. Well, you know, <laughs> that won't happen just like the rudder on that ship. Yeah. She's not gonna be nuts in 30 minutes or a day or two right. or something like that. It takes a period of time, but the more that happens, whatever you're saying, whether it's on the negative or whether it's on the positive side, eventually you're going to have that. It's proven. Well, and what is it that makes that hard for people to understand that when you start confessing the word for your healing, it's not, you know, the ship's not necessarily gonna turn around immediately. Right. That's right. But when you started having unforgiveness, resentment, and, and all of these negative things going on, you didn't immediately, you know, you didn't say, oh, that makes me so mad, and then you got sick. I mean, right. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that way. It's like that shift, it slowly, it slowly turns. So let's talk about some of the words that people do say. People say, oh no, I can't do that, I am sick. Hmm. Now, someone say, well, that's just the truth. 
-hmm. I am sick. Well, it may be what's happening in your body right now, but make sure you don't keep saying that because you will say what you have and have what you say and say what you have, and you'll be stuck. I've heard had people say, oh, well, it's my arthritis. <laughs> my arthritis, not... No, no, it's the devil's oh, I arthritis. Have, I have arthritis, all right. My signifies possession. I have signifies ownership. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I was, um, I don't know, I don't know how much we've talked about it, but there was a, uh, a man that I talked with quite a bit that was a Native American. And, uh, you know, there's many different Native American tribes and they all are not alike. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. But this man was very attuned to the power of words and to what you say. And he told me specifically, face to face, he said that. He said, you people are so weird. <laughs> I said, what do you mean we're weird? And he said, you say, my arthritis, my cancer, my this, my that, I have this, I have that. You say this about sickness. And he said, in saying that, you crystallize it and freeze it in your body. Mm -hmm. He said, in my belief, he said, that's something that's passing through. And I would not say, I have arthritis. I am, you know, my yeah. arthritis. I would say, my knee is paining today. <laughs> That'd be one way of doing it. So he said the truth, you know, his, my knee is paining today. But it's not tomorrow. Or I am fluing today. Uh, I have the flu. He said, because we see it as a condition continually changing. Mm -hmm. It's an energetic condition wow. that passes through and moves on. That's good. And the way we view healing and health many times is it's a construction of something that's fixed and solid. And what I'd like to do today is to start taking those things down and their ideas that we have. Mm. Ideas that we have that sickness is a fixed, permanent thing in our lives. And that is definitely a road block to healing. Yep. So forgiveness is very big in living right. in health. What you say with your mouth, with your tongue, is a very big issue. Right. <laughs> then there are some other things that happen. And uh, here in James chapter 3, it says, Even, And so the tongue is a little member can boast great things. It says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. It's it. Here's the body again. Contaminating and depraving the whole body. Wow. <laughs> So the tongue is tied to health much more closely than even I had ever imagined. Mm -hmm. Just reading this, it jumped out at me. The tongue, wow. the body, the tongue, the body. What you're saying mm -hmm. affects your body. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to the same verse says, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, depraving the whole body, contaminating the whole body. It says, and setting on fire, the wheel of birth. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of research into that. And when it says wheel of birth, cycle of, it, it's, it is talking about DNA. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the words for the double helix back then. Yeah. So they said, it, they called it a wheel of nature mm -hmm. or a cycle of birth, a wheel of birth. So it says your tongue, you could have inherited the strongest DNA possible. <laughs> yeah. And with your tongue, can you can it. change it and make yourself ill and sick. Yep. In the same manner, you could have inherited your mother's DNA, oh my. You could have inherited your father's DNA in that side of the family. They all died before 40 of heart attacks. You could inherit that DNA, you know, physically. Right. But it says the tongue can, can change, change that. Right. So what I do and what I say is that my DNA is from God. Amen. <laughs> I am a child of God and I cannot inherit sickness and disease because God is perfect. 
Amen. His DNA is perfect. I cannot inherit sickness and disease. Therefore, I live in health. Mm -hmm. His word is alive and active and energizing in every cell of my being, mm -hmm. and life reigns in me. Amen. Well, that was good preaching. <laughs> so what happens? What happens some morning when you get up and your head starts bothering you? I'm thinking, hmm, what do you do? Your head starts bothering you as in you're not really well. You don't feel well. Yeah, you get up that morning and I thought you said you were healed. I'm not moved by what I hear, <laughs> what I see, or what I feel. I'm moved by the Word of God and the Word of God says I am well. Amen. But sometimes I, that does happen. That's a, that does happen to people. That doesn't mean that everybody gets up feeling like a million dollars every morning. That's right. Well, you know, being a doer of the Word of God and a follower of Jesus Christ and His teaching means that we walk in forgiveness. And if someone chooses not to forgive, then they are forever tied to that person or event. Forgiving is something that you do for yourself. This is why Jesus told us to forgive. It sets you free. I am offering a two CD series that I taught called Letting Go of Hurts, The Freedom of Forgiveness, and a single CD by my father, Charles Capps, called Unforgiveness, A Thief of Faith, along with a teaching pamphlet I wrote called Wounded Spirits Cause Physical Sickness. Painful memories and experiences are at the root of most anger, hurt, and resentment. These can have a very negative impact on your health, even to the point of making you sick and miserable. If you want to walk in health, forgiveness is paramount. You may not feel like you can forgive, but you can forgive by faith. This series of teachings will help you with these steps of forgiveness and letting go of emotional pains and hurt. That's offer 2293, it's $23 plus $6 shipping in the US. This package has three CDs and a free teaching pamphlet. Call now, 1-877-396-9400. Ask for offer 2293. That's $23 plus $6 shipping in the United States. If you want to order these items separately, call and ask for individual pricing and shipping charges. We also have MP3 downloads, eBooks available at our website, caps.tv. Our goal is to get the good news of the Word of God out to you in every format because God wants you well. Be sure to join us on the next program at the same time as we continue this series on healing and health. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.